The gas laws are a series of statements that describe what we call a fixed mass or fixed amount of gas. First off, I want to go through a few properties of gases and how we describe them. First of all, volume, the amount of space that a substance takes up. Gas volumes could be measured in cubic meters, which would be about the size of a dishwasher or a, perhaps a washing machine. About the size of a milk container would be one decimeter cubed or one liter. The relationship between these two is a thousand. A thousand decimeters cubed equal one cubic meter. You also might have heard the unit cubic centimeters or milliliter. Cubic centimeter and milliliter are the same size. And a thousand cubic centimeters equal one decimeter cubed or one liter. The connection between centimeters cubed and decimeters and meters cubed is a million. A million centimeters cubed equals one meter cubed. So we measure volumes in all three of these units and you should be able to change from one unit to the next. Pressure. The SI unit for pressure is the Pascal. It's a measurement of the force that the particles are hitting the sides of a container with. We define one Pascal as the force of one Newton exerted over a surface area of one square meter. Pascals are often expressed, at least on the weather reports, in units called kilopascals, where a thousand pascals equal but one kilopascal. Typical air pressure on an average day is around 100 kilopascals. Temperature. We're familiar, perhaps, with the Celsius scale. The Celsius scale is a measure of the average kinetic energy of our substance, starting at zero degrees Celsius and climbing to 100 degrees Celsius. When we study gases, we like to use a different scale, called the Kelvin scale, which begins at a temperature that we call absolute zero, the temperature at which the particles would have no kinetic energy and they wouldn't be moving. To switch back and forth between these two scales, we take the Celsius scale and we add 273 to it to convert it to the Kelvin scale. Conversely, if we want to go from Kelvin to the Celsius scale, we subtract 273. Hence, absolute zero is actually minus 273 Celsius. We often will refer to what are called standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is considered to be zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin and standard pressure 100 kilopascals or 1 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Let's look at how a fixed mass of gas behaves to stresses or different changes. Boyle studied the connection between pressure and volume while keeping the temperature the same. Here I have a syringe with a fixed amount of gas in it. It occupies a certain pressure and has a certain volume. If I take that and I make the volume smaller, how does this pressure respond? Well, if I push down on my plunger, making the gas occupy a smaller volume, what will happen is the particles will have less distance to travel and as a result will strike the sides of the container more often, resulting in an increase in pressure. So as the volume went down, the pressure went up. This is what we call an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. Again, this only holds true for a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature. We can express it using this proportionality sign, that the pressure is proportional to one over the volume. Mathematically, we can express it this way, where we take our initial pressure and volume and multiply them, and that will equal the product of our second conditions, pressure and volume. Graphically, it would take this look. So here I plotted my initial point, my initial pressure and my initial volume. In the animation I have here, I reduced the volume, cutting it in half. That would then result in the pressure doubling. Connecting these points with a smooth curve, we would get the following graph. This is typical of what we call an inverse relationship. Some people will attempt to plot it this way, where we replace volume with one over volume, and we get a straight line. That allows us to say that the pressure is proportional to one over the volume. So Boyle's law states that pressure and volume are inversely related, provided the temperature is constant. Charles studied the connection between temperature and volume, keeping the pressure constant. So again, I have my syringe, perhaps at room temperature, and I'm going to subject it to an increase in temperature, perhaps by placing it in a container of boiling water. How does the volume respond? Well, in this particular case, the particles would begin to move faster with an increase in temperature, 
colliding with the sides of my container more often and pushing the plunger in this case up, resulting in increase in volume. So as the temperature increased, the volume increases. This is what we call a proportional relationship. Again, these two are directly proportional, provided I measure the temperature in the Kelvin scale, where I use absolute zero as my baseline. So when stating this law, it is important to mention that the volume is proportional to the temperature in Kelvin, not Celsius. We can write it this way using proportionality, and in a mathematical expression, the ratio of my initial volume over my initial temperature is equal to the ratio of volume over temperature of my second condition. Graphically, I'll place the information down here. There's my initial point of temperature and, of temperature and volume. I'm going to increase the temperature. It will also result in an increase in my volume. And that will give the following straight line. So Charles' law says that a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. Gay-Lussac looked at our last pairing of variables. In this case, how are pressure and temperature related where the volume is kept constant. So in this particular one, I'll increase the temperature of my syringe. That will result then in my particles moving around more forcefully and more quickly, striking the sides of the container far more often, and that will cause my pressure to increase. Again, this is an example of what we call a proportional relationship, much like Charles' law. So the pressure is directly related or directly proportional to the temperature. Again, it must be in the Kelvin scale. There's my statement using proportionality and again using ratios. So my initial pressure over my initial temperature is equal to my second or final pressure over my final temperature. Graphically, it will also plot in a directly proportional relationship, giving me a straight line. So the only combination of variables is pressure and volume that result in an inverse relationship. All of the other combinations of variables result in a proportional relationship. We can put these all together in what's called the combined gas law, where we take all three of our laws and put them together in but one expression. This one expression can be converted to any of the gas laws by making one of the variables constant. For instance, Boyle studied the relationship between pressure and volume, keeping the temperature constant. So if my temperatures are kept constant, they would cancel out giving me this expression, which exactly is the expression for Boyle's law. And we can do the same with any of the other variables. We can keep the volume constant and then have Gay-Lussac's law, or we can keep the pressure constant and then we would have Charles' law. A couple little notes about the use of this particular relationship. First of all, the units of pressure and volume can vary, meaning you could measure the pressure in pascals or kilopascals, even some old British units like pounds per square inch. But the only hitch is they must both be measured in the same unit. The pressure on each side must have the same unit. And likewise, the volumes could be measured in any unit, but they must be the same on both sides. And finally, temperature. This relationship only works if my temperature has been converted to the Kelvin scale. Let's apply this law in a couple of examples. So here I have a fixed mass of gas occupying two decimeters cubed, or two liters, at 100 kilopascals. I move it to a new environment where the pressure has been reduced to 50 kilopascals and the temperature has been kept the same. I first want to solve this without really the use of an equation. Let's just apply the laws. Here I can see that my pressure has been cut in half. Well, how are pressure and volume related? So for that, I consult Boyle's law. Here, I've made the pressure go down. It will respond then by the volume going up because they are inversely related. So reducing the volume by two means I'll increase, sorry, reducing the pressure by two will result in an increase in the volume by two because they're inversely related. Dividing one will multiply the other. I can also obtain that e same answer by using the equation. Here I note in the question that the temperature is constant so I cancel it out. I substitute in my initial conditions, 100 kilopascals and two decimeters cubed, and my final conditions, 50 kilopascals kilopascals, and V2. Isolating for V2, I get 4 cubic meters, or 4 cubic decimeters. The same answer I would get just by applying Boyle's law. Let's look at a second example where a fixed mass of gas, again 2 decimeters cubed, is moved to a new environment where the pressure is doubled 
and the temperature is tripled. Let's start off with the doubling of the pressure. Let's look at how that affects my volume. Again, this is a relationship of Boyle's Law, pressure and volume. Here my pressure went up, my volume must go down. So I'm going to be dividing that 2 decimeters cubed by 2 for the effect of pressure. Now the effect of temperature, I've tripled the temperature. How are temperature and volume related? Well, they're directly related. If my temperature goes up, then my volume must go up. So tripling the temperature should result in a threefold increase in the volume. So take your two decimeters cubed, divide it by two, then multiply by three, and I get a final answer of three decimeters cubed. If I wish to solve it using the equation, I state my initial conditions, and here you'll notice I've added the final conditions, the final pressure, P2, being 2P1, and the final temperature, T2, being 3T1. So we'll just rearrange it. Now we'll cancel out what's common to both sides, and then finally rearrange it to get the final volume by itself on one side. So 3 halves times the initial volume, which gives me exactly the same answer of 3 decimeters cubed. You should get used to solving some of these gas law questions, as many of them will appear in multiple choice, without the aid of a calculator, as I was able to do here. Some more difficult ones, of course, will need the use of a calculator. Questions are always welcome. Thanks for watching.